Oblique asymptotes are weird. They sound made up, they look made up, and feel like part of a multiple choice question your teacher would make up with a fake answer just to mess with you. If you're not familiar with horizontal asymptotes, check the linked video and jump back in once you're up to speed. You can understand what's going on in this video without watching the linked video, but it will certainly help. So as bizarre as oblique asymptotes are, there's something sort of natural about them. I mean, we have vertical asymptotes, we have horizontal asymptotes, so why not slant or diagonal asymptotes? If you watch the video I did on horizontal asymptotes, you know that I referred to oblique asymptotes as the weird, crazy ant of horizontal asymptotes. They're very closely related, and in this video you're going to see why. Just kidding, I made that joke already. So you can spot both a horizontal asymptote and an oblique asymptote by looking at the powers of the x term in the numerator and the denominator. They both also involve looking at what happens to the y values as x approaches infinity. We saw two cases in the horizontal asymptote video, and in this video we're going to see a third. So the first question is when does a rational function have an oblique or slant asymptote? If you recall our investigation into horizontal asymptotes, we started by looking at the powers on x in both the numerator and the denominator. We've seen when the degree on the bottom is higher than the top, when the degrees are equal, and now we're going to see a third possibility, when the top is greater than the degree on the bottom by one degree. Take, for example, this function. So how do we find out what the oblique asymptote will be? If you read this function, it literally says x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 2. This should give us a pretty good clue as to how to proceed. If you think about the definition of horizontal asymptotes, the y value f function approaches as x goes to infinity, we're going to see something pretty strange happen here. We know the asymptote won't be one constant y value like it was in the other video because if there's a diagonal line, there's going to be more than one y value that this function approaches. In fact, there'll be a different y value for every possible x value. This means our asymptote will take on the form of a line, a line that has a slope and a y-intercept. So let's go back to the observation we just made. This says x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 2. So let's divide the numerator of this function by the denominator and see what happens. Now this requires the use of either polynomial long division yeah. or synthetic division. Woo I've linked videos to both of these concepts here. In the interest of keeping this video as concise as possible, I'm not going to explain these methods in detail. I'm just going to choose to use synthetic division as it's much, much quicker and efficient than polynomial long division. Okay, so I write out my coefficients of the numerator. I leave a placeholder zero for the fact that I'm missing an x term here. And I take the constant term of what I'm dividing by and place it right here. So I apply the synthetic division algorithm by bringing the first coefficient down, multiplying by the constant term, and placing the result here. I then subtract 0 minus 2 to get 2. I then take that 2, multiply by negative 2, place the result here, and then subtract one final time. Now, the result will be the coefficients of the result of my division. Because I started with an x squared term and I divided by an x, it makes sense that my result should have an x term and a constant term. So I could summarize this by saying the result of dividing x squared plus 1 by x minus 2 is x plus 2 with a remainder of 5. So what have I produced as a result of this division? Well, I got a result of x plus 2 and a remainder of 5. We can represent the remainder as a fraction with the denominator being the denominator of the original function. I know, this is pretty complicated. Remember, this is all covered in depth in the video that I've linked on synthetic division. So next we ask, what happens as x approaches infinity? Well, if I look at the x value right here, if I make this a very big number, I've got 5 divided by a very big number, it should be pretty intuitive that this is going to 0. So this term does not actually matter whatsoever in the long run, so when I approach infinity. So what I'm left with is x plus 2. So you could say that this is what happens to the y values as x goes to infinity. The y values are modeled by this line. Therefore, we can say the equation of the oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 2. So this is a line with a slope and a y-intercept. I can graph this line along with my original function to produce the following sketch. Note that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. That's because the denominator of my original function had a situation where x had a restriction that it could not be equal to 2. And so you can see here on the graph, my y-intercept is 2, I have a slope of 1, and I can follow that oblique asymptote to predict what happens to the y-values as x goes off to infinity in both the positive and the negative directions. So there you have it, the demystification of the most made-up sounding feature of some rational functions. So maybe you don't think the weird crazy ant is that weird and crazy after all. If this video helped you in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. As usual, thanks for watching.